Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to learn one of the most iconic and instantly recognizable hard rock riffs of all time, the brilliant opening salvo to ACDC's seminal classic, Hell's Bells, a riff every serious rock guitarist should have in his or her arsenal. Classic that riff is. Hell's Bells is the opening track on ACDC's 1980 masterpiece, Back in Black. It is not only one of the biggest rock releases of all time, but it's one of the music world's best selling albums of any genre ever. Just to give you an idea, thus far, Back in Black has clocked up over 50 million sales worldwide, and that number is still rising. In fact, this album has sold in excess of 25 million copies in America alone. Wow! Hell's Bells was such a pivotal song that on ACDC's breakthrough Back in Black tour in the early 80s, the band had a huge cast iron Hell's Bell custom made that they suspended over the stage. Now apparently this behemoth of a bell weighed around two and a half thousand pounds. That's about two and a half tons, my friend. Now I don't know about you, but I wouldn't like to have that hanging over my head while I was playing on stage. Not surprisingly, since that lengthy tour, the band have retired the iron bell and replaced it with a much lighter fiberglass replica. Smart move. Anyway, brief history lesson over, let's learn the riff, shall we? Now I've seen several transcriptions of this classic riff played around an open A minor chord shape, just like this. Sure, the notes are correct, but it involves a lot of string skipping and it's a royal pain in the butt to play, I've got to tell you. I keep hitting the D string and that sounds awful. <laughs> See what I mean? That was clunky and it was awful. At least I didn't hit the D string, but it sounds wrong and it's way, way too hard to play. Now, having seen Angus play this riff live numerous times and also the video too, I knew for a fact that that wasn't the right place in the neck to play this classic. So when I had the good fortune to do some guitar lessons with him for Guitar World in the late 90s, I asked him all about it and I showed him the riff played with the A minor open chord. Here's what he said. Maybe those guys were really playing it right, he said laughing before he showed me his way, the right way. He also told me this, that he'd written riff on an acoustic guitar in the key of E minor originally. As he said, it sounds meaner in E, but he changed it to A for the vocal thing. Interesting. Here's what that riff sounds like when played in E minor, which is just one string lower towards me, towards my head. <laughs> That does sound pretty mean played in E minor, doesn't it? Anyway, now we know the backstory, here's how he plays it, the Angus way, in the key we all know and love, A minor. <laughs> Yes, my friend, that's the way Angus plays it, in the key of A minor. And I know for a fact I've got it right, even though I'm not playing it as well as him, because I sat in the room and he showed me, just me and him. And they paid me for it. Best gig on the planet. Yes! The way we're going to learn this riff is like we always do, namely by breaking it down into simple three or four note bite-sized chunks. 
Before we start playing though, there's one thing we need to do first, namely finger an A5 power chord on the D and G strings up at the seventh fret. This bad boy right here. <laughs> As you can see, I'm fretting the A note at the 7th fret on the D string with my index finger, and the E note at the 9th fret on the G string with my pinky. And when I play them together... Now you could fret this G string note with your 3rd finger if you prefer, like this. Do whatever feels most comfortable to you. I prefer the pinky. Anyway, having made this shape, we are now in a position to play the first three notes of the riff, and they are these ones. Here it is again, a little slower. As you can see, all I'm doing is this. I'm letting the notes ring, and I'm playing the open A string, then jumping to the G string, hitting that, letting it ring, then coming back to the D string and hitting that and letting it ring too. So we've got this. And that, my friend, is chunk number one, three notes. Now our next three notes make up chunk number two, and they are simply these. One more time, a little slower. As you can see, all I'm doing is this. I'm barring the D and G strings at the seventh fret with my first finger, and then picking G string, D string, then open A just like this. One more time. Pretty easy, right? And that's chunk number two. And as you've probably already worked out, getting to this fingering from the A5 power chord we just played in chunk one is pretty easy. All you have to do is this. You simply lift the finger you're fretting the ninth fret on the G string with, like that, leaving the first finger exactly where it is, and then flatten it, thus barring the G and D strings at the 7th fret. Nice! So it's lift, flatten, bar, pick, done. So if I put chunk 1 and chunk 2 together, I've got the first six notes of Hell's Bells, and they are these. Now you'll be pleased to learn that the next three notes which make up chunk 3 are also pretty simple to play. The three in question are this trio right here. One more time. As you can probably see, it's the same G string, D string, open A string picking pattern again, with another one fingered bar on the G and D strings with your first finger, but this time at the fifth fret. Here are those three notes one more time. Now to get to this fingering from chunk two, all you literally have to do is scoot your first finger back two frets from the seventh fret to the fifth, just like this. One more time, just a hair slower. So, if we add chunk three to chunks one and two, we now have our first nine notes, and they are these. And one more time, a hair slower. Our next chunk, surprise, surprise, is chunk number four. And aptly enough, it consists of, wait for it, four notes. Brilliant! The first three notes are a classic case of deja vu, because they're the exact same three as in chunk two. Namely, the note at the seventh fret on the G string, followed by the note at the seventh fret on the D string, and then the open A string again, just like this. As you've probably noticed, the only difference this time around is I fingered these notes with my third finger, not my first finger. You can obviously use your first finger if you like, though. Once again, just do whatever feels most comfortable for you. I prefer finger three. As for the MIA fourth note in chunk four, it's merely another hit of the open A string, meaning that we're playing the A string open twice in succession back to back, just like this. That stated, here are the four notes that make up chunk number four. Right, let's play chunks one through four in quick succession, shall we? And see what we've got thus far. We're nearly there, my friend. 
Next up is chunk number five. And this one is really, really short because it's just two notes. What we do is leave a slight pause while that last open A string in chunk four is allowed to ring. Then we refinger our good old friend the A5 power chord shape on the D and G strings at the seventh fret, and then pick the G string followed by the D, just like this. Yep, like I said, chunk five is really, really short, and it's effectively the last two notes of chunk one. So here it is added with chunks one through four. This is chunk one through five. <laughs> Our next move is another easy one because it's also another case of deja vu. All we do is this. We repeat chunk number two, namely this one. This means thus far we've got this. Next up is chunk six, which is actually chunk three with this little bit added on the end and allowed to ring. As you can see, all I'm doing here on this tag we're about to add to chunk three is this. I'm fretting the D and G strings at the seventh fret with my third finger, then hitting both notes at the same time with a single down pick. Now, as you hopefully remember, chunk three is merely this. So if we add the extra bit we've just learnt, we get this. One more time, a little slower. And that, my friend, is chunk number six. Here it is again, one more time for good luck. One more chunk, chunk number seven, and we are done. We've crossed the finish line. Here's what chunk seven sounds like. What we're doing here is simply this. First, we play a C5 power chord on the A and D strings, just like this. As you can see, I'm fretting the C note at the third fret on the A string with my index finger. This one here. And I'm also playing the G note at the fifth fret on the D string with my pinky. And then playing them both together. Now, you can obviously use your third finger to fret this note on the D string, but the pinky may well prove easier due to the next two string chord that's coming up next, which is this. As you can see, my pinky stays exactly where it was for the C5 chord, namely at the fifth fret on the D string, but my index finger moves back to the B at the second fret on the A string before I hit both strings again like this. That's why I recommend using the pinky. That's a stretch using a third. That's still a stretch, but just a tad easier. Now, in case you're interested, this wide stretch two note chord or dyad is called G slash B. And a lot of rock bands use this shape because it, well, sounds cool. I'll explain exactly what it is in a future lesson. In the meantime, let's get back to chunk seven. This is what we've got thus far. The only thing missing? An open A string or open A5 power chord like this. So what we've got is this. Or it can be played just with the open A string like this. When Angus showed me, he definitely played the A5 power chord, so that's my preferred version because it just sounds a bit chunky, especially when you don't have Malcolm playing behind you. Having done this, we allow the A to ring, giving us a chance to get our fretboard hand back to our good old friend, the A5 shape. And then we start all over again with what we've just learned, but minus that first open A string note, as that's already been hit at the end of chunk seven. Makes sense? If it doesn't, here is the riff repeated. Here goes. <laughs> See and hear what I mean? And there you have it, my friend, a genuine hard rock classic. 
Now, don't forget to back off your gain when playing this gym. If you listen very carefully to ACDC, they're not using half as much gain as most people think they are, especially the late, great Malcolm Young. He was really, really clean, but he beat the heck out of his guitar. And by the way, Mr. Young, thanks for all the great riffage, amazing stuff. So, put the gain where you think it should be, then do this. Pull it back just a hair, then hit the guitar really hard and have fun with this one. I'm out. See ya! Thank you so very, very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Nicely, please. And for more videos like this, just click here. We've got a bunch, and they're really, really good, because most of them don't have me in them. Anyway, please go to sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. And once again, really appreciate you watching. You have no idea. It just makes me warm inside. Thanks a lot.